all right so uh, the first discussion is on uh, you know the ways uh, the different ways in which you can learn okay especially the kind of methods that we use in a business school uh, there are two types of these two terms that you have to be familiar with uh, one is called the lecture tutorial method okay and one is the seminar style method okay teaching these are teaching methods so as students not only do you have to study you also have to be familiar with the different ways of studying okay this is kind of like meta learning it's like learning about learning okay so you have to also be aware of what are the different uh, uh, pedagogical innovations coming across and what are the different styles of learning so what you have seen you guys are already familiar with the case method you've seen it being practiced in your class right so the case method really falls into what is called the seminar style teaching okay so in case method in seminar style what happens is the faculty really does not contribute much okay uh, i mean they obviously do uh, contribute but uh, it's mainly the inputs of the students so mainly students have to give in their uh, all their different views and then the faculty later on will try to integrate all that into one uh, cohesive uh, kind of solution so that's what is called the seminar style method okay where it's very interactive okay and uh, the other style of method is if you're familiar with how physics is taught or maths is taught you're all familiar with that uh, from school days so that is taught according to a lecture tutorial method okay so if you have maths of like if i'm teaching you how to do matrices then i'll first tell you okay this is a matrix these are the matrix this is, these are the columns uh, these are the uh, rows these are the columns and this is how you multiply matrices so there's not really much input from i'm not going to ask everybody how do you think we should multiply the matrices there's only one way of doing it okay so there's it's it's not efficient i mean if you think about the case method it's efficient for certain types of study but it's not efficient for certain other i mean if i try to teach maths through a case method or physics through a case method it would not be efficient okay so the other style of teaching is the uh, what is called the lecture tutorial method which is more appropriate for subjects like maths and physics okay so you do you go through a bunch of concepts and then you might have a tutorial where the you're tested on the concepts so you're given some problems you have to do certain problems and the teacher will help you out if you have some prob if you are not able to progress okay so that's the lecture tutorial method so if you see uh, so this is one introduction to the different styles of teaching and here of course we'll see that uh, the other there's other uh, the other thing that you have to look at uh, another new style of teaching that has come up i think it was pa pioneered by caltech okay in california this is called the flipped classroom method which is what we're going to use in lab okay in this course the flipped classroom method means that initially see normal the, the standard method of teaching is uh, is that you are taught certain material and then you are examined on the material so first the teacher explains all the material and then you are examined on it okay in the flipped classroom method what happens is you are not uh, the teacher does not explain first you are just given the material you have to study it on your own and then you are examined on it and then the teacher explains what is the right way to look at that material okay so this is the flipped classroom flip means basically turned upside down okay so this is a new new style of teaching that is uh, you know being followed in many of the leading universities so we were we are going to follow this for lab so what's going to happen is when your cases that the judgments that you are given to make presentations on i'm not going to give you any input on that you have to read the judgment on your own and you just have a set of questions and you have to answer the questions on your own so basically i'm not teaching you anything you are doing it on your own first and you are going to be evaluated because we going to give you a cp presentations you will uh, you know uh, you will be marked on your cp presentations as you can see different teams get different marks so if you have understood the case if you have understood the judgment well okay then uh, you will get higher marks and those who have not understood or not, are not able to present well they will get lower marks so you get graded okay so it's a flipped classroom approach that's what's going to happen in lab okay so you have to be aware of this also that why are we doing it this way what is this so what are you doing you should also have some idea theoretically about what is it that you're doing so we can say that in lab we practice the flipped classroom method okay so that you're aware of these kinds of uh, uh, teaching styles okay okay now just a second part just to briefly share some software with you i mean this is not really that important some if you guys are, i got uh, one of my mentees was telling me that she was having a lot of trouble uh, i think she stays in dwarka she was not able to get much sleep it's too much you know work on the course so i mean one of the things i suggested to her is that if you want to, if you have trouble reading on the train one of the things you can try out i don't know if you are aware there's text to speech software okay which i use a lot when i i did my llb recently from delhi university so we had to study a lot of judgments and i was out on the train a lot so i didn't want to read so I, what i did was i installed text to speech software and then i used to listen to the cases okay I listen to the judgments it's pretty good actually it comes out quite well i'll try and play something for you 
if to figure out maybe we shouldn't waste this time here but uh, I'll just play one okay let's see how this comes out so just to give you a sense of how text-to-speech works okay press how the deed of settlement further by which it appeared that the company was formed for the purpose of carrying on mining operations hear? and forming a railway it then alleged that at a general meeting of the company it was resolved that the directors of the said company should be and they were thereby authorized to borrow on mortgage bond or otherwise okay so pretty clear so that this this software that you have here I've just given you the links okay this actually uh, it costs about 320 rupees or something so I, I had to buy there's a free version also but it's very irritating because he keeps telling you to buy the software so I bought the software <laughs> so uh, anyway so this to give you an idea of what is possible with modern technology okay so you can do this and then you can convert uh, while this is so what I do is I, I take the text and dump it into the text-to-speech software while it is reading out I use this smart voice recorder to record the uh, The narration, okay, and then I use a media converter because these are wave files which are very big And then I use a media converter to convert it into mp3 which is about one-fourth the size Okay, so then it's easier to store but you can see how this is like the default mode if you want you can change the voice to a male voice I'm okay with the default so I didn't change it so you can change and uh, you can have different uh, access uh, this works on google text to speech uh, software okay so this is just some ideas for you if you have trouble because you guys have to study a lot okay it's a very competitive time you guys have to do a lot of reading okay so if you're stuck in a situation where you can't read maybe you're in a car it's not good to read because it's moving too much so you can actually uh, use text to speech to just listen to stuff in fact i've got so used to this that i prefer this rather than reading because I find that the retention is better if I have uh, if I listen to it rather than if I read it so I mean these are just personal preferences but anyway so I'm just gonna give you now in the rest of this section uh, I'm just gonna give you this is like our model module a uh, unit zero it has no connection to lab or it has no connection to any other course that you're doing okay so these are some general guidelines which I want to just share with I feel it is uh, my duty to share it with the students because I feel uh, many of the things that I'm going to tell you now I wish that somebody had told me when I was your age so I feel that when I was your age I wasted a lot of my time doing all kinds of stupid things which now if I had a chance I would not do I would spend my time in a more constructive way okay? so you know the story there's a saying right that youth is wasted on the young you heard the expression so you, when you're young you have so much energy and you waste your time doing all kinds of stupid things especially the guys okay the girls are more studious but the guys are all very distracted okay so um, anyway so I just uh, so sometimes uh, sometimes I feel that uh, you know because we see a, a lot of our students come in they just want to get a degree they are not interested in learning okay so sometimes a little frustrating for teachers because we feel that now they're not interested in learning so then in that case I would not do this kind of a module because it has no relation to any kind of degree work that you're doing okay you're not going to get graded on this but I think this is important advice that young people should be given even at the MBA stage which is quite late actually this kind of stuff should be taught to students in school in junior school but but still better late than never because I never heard this kind of stuff until I was like in my 40s or something so uh, okay so the first thing I think I, I gave you guys this idea in the orientation itself okay the first thing you have to avoid is a lot of students I'm noticing a lot of MBA students who don't get into the top schools like IMA, IMB etc they feel that oh you know we are somehow second grade you know and we are not good enough as good as the other guys who got into IMA and all that so that that mentality should be avoided okay actually I don't think uh, this is actually I don't think this is true because I think when you guys enter into different management schools based on your CAT scores largely okay I don't think the difference between the students at IMA and the students here is that much when you enter but what happens is by the time they graduate the difference is very big okay this is actually highlighted to me by one of my students that I taught a course at IMT Gazebal and one of these students was telling me and then I realized he's right so this is happening because the guys who are at IMA and the top schools they are actually working like maniacs they're working like maniacs for those two years and the students who are in the not so highly ranked schools they have already given up like okay we are all going to be playing only Ranji Trophy for the rest of our lives and we are not like top grade so why bother 
okay so they just you know keep on doing all kinds of other stuff so this is the first problem that you should avoid okay so this is the first step okay at this first step you didn't make it to a top tier school okay but that doesn't mean that the whole game is over the life is a marathon it's not a hundred meter race okay so you have to weigh, look at ways where you can catch up and you can compete with the best and it's possible okay you have to believe that it's possible so first don't like shoot yourself in the foot in the very beginning okay so one of the reasons why if you look at this job they've stopped doing this report now which is why we are still dealing with the uh, 2016 report but the point is that this gap still exists okay so they're talking about a skills gap this is based on u.s business schools so u.s business schools if they have a skills gap you can imagine that in india it's much bigger okay so what they have done you can study this format later on on your own i don't think you can read much it's quite bright actually but it's actually a four uh, four box framework. I mean, it's like a, a quadrant. Uh, it's like a quadrant here. Okay, four quadrants. So uh, this you can just study on your own. I don't want to spend too much time on it. Okay. Um, but essentially, what it is, they've done look, looked at various skills. The most important thing for us is actually this part, where uh, they're saying that these are the skills in this quadrant. Is everyone able to see the quadrant? You can see it okay so what they're saying is in this quadrant which they have shaded blue you can't see the blue shading this is the part which is uh, what they're calling the sweet spot which is less common but more desired which means companies desire these skills but they're finding that in the crop of mba students that they're recruiting they have these skills are less commonly found okay and so what they're saying is leadership skills okay creative problem solving also i guess you could say that and uh, strategic thinking and then communication skills Okay, these are examples of skills. So the point, the point here is that even the top-notch MBA programs leave uh, the companies, the recruiters dissatisfied on many fronts. Because the MBA programs, one of the main reasons for this is that MBA programs are designed by academics. So most of the people who have designed MBA programs have never really worked in industry. Okay, they're very limited industry experience. So there is, because of that, there is a gap and becomes quite big in certain certain types of disciplines so there is a there is an opportunity if you focus if you identify the kinds of skills that companies want and business schools are not providing okay plus there are other areas like if you go into specific domains there are certain types of domain knowledge okay especially in areas like finance where you can have certain types of domain knowledge which are not being actually covered in uh, in the typical business school programs okay so if you work the message here essentially is that because uh, because even the top MBA programs are not doing a perfect job okay so if you can address the shortcomings in the top programs and if you can build certain critical skills which companies require okay even though you're not at top business school you still have a chance at the, at the interview stage to perform you know better than people from the top business schools okay so uh, so therefore this is how this is how you should see that I mean, this is where, the way that you have an opportunity so don't give up at the early stage so you can try and make sure that you uh, are uh, you know very well prepared okay and as far as interviews are concerned so you have to prepare yourself on the assumption that you will get a very good uh, you know opening at the interview stage our placement team keeps on working on it okay now you may not uh, this next year the companies might improve or whatever but the point is that you have to be prepared assuming that you're going to be interviewed by the best recruiters so don't assume that oh, okay we are not going to get the best recruiters here so let me just do like 50 percent preparation don't do that okay because you could get opportunities from here and there through some connections through somewhere else somewhere the door might open so you have to be 100 percent prepared don't like under prepare yourself assuming that you're not going to get a good opportunity because life has a way of throwing out good opportunities in you know random ways so you should be the pre prepared to the best possible extent okay so is this clear are you getting the message okay all right okay so there's another thing that i want to de deal with a little bit that in especially in our culture we have a tendency to distinguish between stupid and smart people okay we say okay this guy is kind of stupid and this guy is kind of smart now i think that's not the real distinction actually according to me so what i want to just share with you i think that the real distinction is between lazy people and industrious people okay so here essentially you can see the message that i'm giving i think it's important to be aware of this okay that uh, you know what is industrious right industrious means hard working okay so the real distinction so what my view is that with the people that we call stupid are actually basically lazy people because they're not uh, they're not willing to do the hard work required to become smart and smartness is just it's your brain connections and your brain is also something that uh, you know grows with use it becomes more powerful the brain is not some static entity that is given to you at birth that okay you've been given this kind of brain 
your brain power can increase increase if you incre if you exercise the brain okay just like your biceps get bigger if you do bicep curls in the gym if you do brain work your brain will also become more powerful because the brain is being pressured and the brain has tremendous capacity so you have to understand that the brain is a plastic entity if you push your brain then it will become smarter over time okay but you have to push your brain you have to have that belief that it has to be, it can be done okay so that's the other top point that i wanted to mention okay now one more thing this you will hear only this ton you don't understand what is meant by tunnel vision you understand what is meant by tunnel vision Focus. Yeah, it's focus, right? So everyone has heard this. This is something that you'll hear only from me uh, in this institute because all the other faculties are not in line with this particular idea. But my point is always that uh, we should not be actually encouraging students to do all this, uh, you know, precious, precious party thing. You just give them some food and drink and let them have fun. Don't like I was just, you know, like watching you guys spend so much time preparing for the freshers party. I mean, the performances are very good. But the point is, you're not in first year of college anymore. You're in a professional program. You have to compete with other students from top tier business schools. Okay, which I believe you can compete with them. So you should be spending your time 24 seven on just preparing yourself to become like business ninjas. Okay, which means 24 seven, you understand only business. You don't distract yourself with the sports day and you know this day and that day and all kinds of stuff which I'm not in favor of because I think that at this this is only this all this kind of activities for first two years of college first two years of undergrad college is where you do all this kind of stuff okay you enjoy your freedom from school and now you're in a professional program it's a master's program now this is what serious business so I think that encouraging students to do all these kinds of sports day and this that I think it sends a wrong message okay. So I think the message we should be sending to our students is that they should have tunnel vision that you should the moment you enter the institute throughout actually throughout the day for these two years. Okay, you forget everything else. Okay, like one of my mentees that she was saying that I am a yoga instructor. Also, so I told her you forget about yoga for two years now. Okay, so you put, just put, put it aside. You can do your yoga once you graduate. Now for two years, you are just involved. Your brain should be immersed in the sea of business. Okay, 24 seven, you should just be getting input on global business, nothing else. So this, this message is very important. Everyone knows the story of Arjun and the bird. Yes, sir. Yes. Everyone knows, right? So the problem with Yudhishthir was when he was asked, what can you see? He said, oh, I can see you. I can see my brothers. I can see everybody. So then Ronacharya said, if you do yoga, you go. <laughs> okay. So that's the focus that you need to have. It's very important because you need to give yourself the best shot at getting a good job. Okay. So later on, when you're graduating, you should not have a regret that I did not do this and I did not do that. Okay. So these two, because once you start working, you will not be, ha you will not have the ability to, you won't have the time to study. Now you're a full time student. Use this to become a business ninja. Okay. That should be your goal. So which means the way you do it is 24 seven, you should be just absorbing input on global business. Okay. And the way, and the way it works is if you bombard your brain like that, remember I said the brain is a plastic entity. Okay. So if you bombard your brain continuously like that, even with stuff you don't understand, maybe you're learning about some business issues in France or something like that. It doesn't matter if you don't understand. If you keep on doing that right now, you'll understand only 2%. If you keep on bombarding your brain after six months, you'll understand 25%. After nine months, you'll understand 35%. That's how it grows. So you can't achieve everything in one day. If you build up the momentum over two years, at the time that you're graduating, you'll find that you're very well informed. And what's going to happen is that you know the way that your brain has been bombarded because nobody is stupid here okay if you bombard your brain your brain will figure out a way to make sense of things it will figure out how to process the information okay when you're dreaming at night what is happening your brain is actually you know filtering out all the different information is filing the brain is actually filing information between long-term memory and short-term memory that is why you get dreams one of the reasons why you get dreams so the brain is going to figure out a way and by the time you if you keep on bombarding yourself like this for two years by the time you graduate what's going to happen is when you're talking in your interview because the interview will be decided in the first five minutes they will look at your confidence level they look at your body language okay what's going to happen is when you're answering questions in your interview because you absorbed input from so many sources for so long the way you answer questions that will show that you're, you have this much domain knowledge that you've been doing all the hard work that you've been doing that will show up in your interview answers in the way you answer questions. Okay. And that's where you seal the deal. Are you following the strategy that I'm laying out? Okay. Is everyone clear? Okay. 
all right okay so the other thing is there's, there's an article here now this is behind a paywall so you can't but this is you know who Sheryl Sandberg is nobody knows okay so this is again showing you that you are not sufficiently immersed in business in the world of Sheryl Sandberg is the who's the CEO or C double O. What is the C double O? Chief Operating Officer. So Sheryl Sandberg is the COO of Facebook. Okay. So uh, Sheryl, Sand this is an interview with Sheryl Sandberg where she's saying that uh, we don't need uh, MBAs in Facebook. Okay. What Facebook is doing is actually they're taking plus two students and giving them coding uh, mm -hmm. tests, and they're hiring from there. Okay. And so therefore, there's a demand in the U.S. now for just pure coding-related uh, training. Okay. So, so what she's saying basically, you don't need an MBA to uh, to excel in, in 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 tech. Okay. So the point is she's making is that we don't care about your degrees; we care about your skills. That's what matters. That is what I tell many of our students who think that they're just going to get a degree from here. That's it. Degrees don't really count for much. When companies are interviewing you, companies are not fools. They will hire people who they think that they can do something for the company. Okay. And for that, you need skills. So now you're transitioning because we have a very uh, badly messed up educational system in this country. We are incentivizing students to get degrees and marks and all that. We are not emphasizing skills. So you need to rectify that for yourself. You're a part of the system. So you're affected by that. You need to rectify that for yourself. Okay. And understand now that now the game is about skills. So you have to be always thinking, I, I'm amazed when I see many other students here going around, you know, just getting a degree. When we were at IIM Ahmedabad, we have, we have no concern about jobs because I graduated in 1990. So it was a long time ago. But the point is, even at IIM Ahmedabad, I was continuously thinking about what skills do I have? I mean, why should a company hire me? What can I do for a company? So I was always thinking about skills that I need to develop some real world skills, which will be useful for a company. And that's why they're going to hire me. Okay, so you have to think about that in, in these terms. Why should a company hire you? Every day you look, at in the, look in the mirror and ask yourself, why should a company hire me? What do I know? What can I do for a company? That should be your mindset. Is this clear? So accordingly, you have to go outside your curriculum and that should be your focus. If required, you go outside your curriculum and it will be required and focus on developing skills. Okay, have that question on your mind all, mind all the time. Okay. Are you guys getting bored or what? Are you are you following what we are what I'm saying? Okay, okay. There is I've given you an example here just for the sake uh, for finance. Okay, there is this website which is a major financing uh, financial recruiting website. So obviously it doesn't apply to other people who are not doing finance. But just, you can go to other recruiting websites. There are many rec recruiting websites. The point is here that you go to the websites, go to the recruiting websites, look at the job descriptions. Okay. Take some random jobs, look at job descriptions. I don't know why it's taking so long to load. But anyway, I'll just give you the message. The point is that you go to recruiting websites, look at job descriptions. If you want to understand, let's say you're interested in uh, maybe supply chain management. So go to some supply chain, uh, go to a recruiting website, look at some supply chain managing jo management jobs. Look at what they're saying in the job description. What do they, what does the guy need to do? Okay. So then you know, and they'll also mention what kind of skills are required. Okay. So try to go to these job sites and, and get a feeling for what the job descriptions are, what skills are required. And then you ask yourself, do I have these skills? Okay. So in this way, you should de develop an understanding of the world of business. Actually on this, you will find uh, there are some jobs for graduates also. Okay. In this, on this particular website, there are jobs for graduates also. You can search jobs and look for graduate jobs, graduates or um, trainees or something. But the idea is this is for fresh freshers. There are jobs for freshers also. Okay. So you can do that. Go to all the different job sites and look up the JDs. Okay. You understand what JD is? Job description. Okay. All right. So broadly, the skills that you have to focus on are these skills critical thinking, obviously. Okay. I'm not going to repeat all this stuff. Domain knowledge, I'll explain what that is. Okay, strategic thinking again. Essentially, strategic thinking is about you guys have have you guys done any strategy courses yet? Not yet. Okay, so strategy, you'll find strategy is a very integrative course. Okay, so strategy is where you design the business strategy of a company. Okay, so like one of the big questions that people have about Apple today is now why is uh, what is the next uh, big thing for Apple? Okay, because the iPhone sales are not really uh, growing that much okay and they're having to cut the prices a little bit because average price still went up but now uh, what is the next big thing for apple this iphone has worked very well what is the next is it the is it the car okay should now people are saying should apple buy tesla 
okay these kinds of questions these are all strategy based questions so strategy you'll find is a very integrative subject where you have to integrate finance marketing okay operations all kinds of things so strategy is a very integrative subject and it basically uh, when we say strategic thinking this is what ceos require if you notice this is one of the uh, traits that companies are not able to find in in graduates okay even from the top schools so strategic thinking is how you can integrate on a big picture uh, uh, on a big picture level all the different disciplines and come up with a holistic strategy for the company okay because every company needs a strategy all right every company needs a strategy so you have to have that ability this will come over time but you have to be aware of what is required okay so these are the kind of skills that you have to develop okay uh, so analytical essentially everyone understands what is analytical you will see some of that in your lab itself when you look at the judgments you'll see that the judgments are very analytical okay it's very logical the judgments are very logical so this is what analytical thinking uh, essentially means okay and you have to bring your own individual perspective into that okay i'll discuss that briefly a little bit domain knowledge i'm just coming to now communication skills i just want to briefly send, uh, spend a little bit of time this is a very big problem okay May's, most companies still talk about communication skills and i haven't listened to all of you guys talking but i'm pretty sure there'll be some people in the batch whose english is weak okay either your spoken english or your written english the spoken english is what people detect first okay interview they're not going to check your written english first they see a spoken English first. So you have to be very careful. Make sure you work on this, okay? Because this, in India, if, you are, if you're gonna get a better quality job, your English needs to be good. If your English is not at least you know, fluent, it just needs to be manageable. You don't have to speak like Shashi Tharoor, but you can just, it has to be manageable. So you take it to a level where it should not be an issue anymore, okay? People should not feel that this guy can't speak fluently, okay? Because we had one guy, actually one of your super seniors, we had a good company from the uh, from Bombay called Bark. They do the, all the television TRPs, broadcast analysis uh, research center. They made an offer to Mukun, but another BARC. So these guys, one of them, another stu student from Mukun's batch, who was also deemed to be technically competent. They wanted to make him an offer, but his English was so poor. The guys were saying, now th because this particular data scientist role, you have to go and make presentations in front of other uh, you know executives and co company top management. So they're going to ask you questions. Okay, how did you get this finding? You know, what is the justification? Now, if you're not able to answer fluently, how are you? How are you going to cope? So they basically rejected him based on communication skills. So don't let that happen to you. The point is again, as I said, this on communication skills, you have to again self belief is important. You understand what self belief is? You have to first believe that uh, you know you this can be done. Okay, like I said, if Zimbabwe is playing Australia in a cricket match. The one thing they can do, we should just give up because we are a lower ranked team. We can't beat them. You think that's what they should do? No, sir. They should play and try to win, right? So that's the point that don't give up. You have to first believe that it can be done. If you don't believe that it can't be done, then obviously you can't do it. Okay. So communication skills, very important. Okay. There are easy ways to do this, but you have to first believe that it can be done. I've given you some example. Akshay, young Akshay Kumar, you guys have not seen, but young Akshay Kumar could not speak a word of English. Okay, so but now he speaks okay. Okay, Harbhajan has also improved his English, and the most uh, dramatic example is Narendra Modi. His, his improvement is quite dramatic. Okay, where well, he doesn't speak that much anymore, but he made a speech to the Australian Parliament. But his improvement is quite dramatic. So the point is that it can be done. Okay, but you have to put your mind, you have to first believe that it can be done, and then you have to do, do it, you have to get it done. Okay, so we can give a lot of other examples. Have you guys, have you guys heard of Nani Palkiwala? No one has heard of Nani Palkiwala. Okay, so Nani Palkiwala is one of India's greatest lawyers. Okay, he's passed away now. And uh, anyway, so Nani Palkiwala, as you can imagine, a lawyer has to argue in the courtroom. Okay, so he's actually called courtroom genius. There's a book about him called courtroom genius. You can read that if you want. So, but Nani Palkiwala had a stammer. You know what a stammer is? Yes. Okay, so he had a stammer when he was young. Okay, so how does a guy with a stammer become India's greatest lawyer? Again, shows you that it can be done. Okay, he actually practiced. I don't know what exactly he used, but he used some a technique to uh, uh, you know get rid of the stammer. There's another famous person uh, from ancient history. There's a guy called uh, Demosthenes. I'll just write his name because he's quite important. You can Google this. You'll see a picture of him talking on the beach. So have you heard of this guy Demosthenes? Okay. So have you heard of Alexander the Great? Yeah. Okay. So Alexander the Great's father was Philip the Second of Macedon. When he was invading Athens, okay. There's a guy called, there was this guy, Demosthenes, who actually inspired the Athenians to fight against Philip II of Macedon. 
Now, obviously, if you have to inspire a bunch of Athenians, you have to be a good speaker. But this guy, Demosthenes, also had a stammer. So how did he become a great orator? He used to take pebbles and he used to put pebbles in his mouth. I think Palgewal also did something similar. He used to put pebbles on his, in his mouth and then he used to go to the uh, seashore so people wouldn't laugh at him. And he used to practice speaking with pebbles in his mouth. And that's how he got rid of his stammer. Okay. So the point is that you can take extraordinary steps and improve and you can make dramatic improvements. Even people with stammers can become great orators. So you have to make an effort because this is a very big problem with a lot of students. Okay, so don't let this be a problem for you. It's, it's very easy to do. I'll give you, you listen to it. The way you do it is you immerse yourself. Okay, let's just take an example. It's like suppose, suppose I were uh, forced to live in a remote village in Japan where no one speaks in English. Okay, let's say right now I don't know any Japanese. Okay, now I'm forced to live in a remote village in Japan where no one speaks any English for one year. Okay, now when I come out of that village after one year, do you think I'll be fluent in Japanese? Yes, because even for water, food, everything, I'll have to speak Japanese. Okay, so the way and how does that happen? Because I'm forced to learn Japanese because everything around me is in Japanese. Oh, my whole world is Japanese. So I'm ha I have to learn because otherwise if I, I won't survive. Okay, so the way you do it is this is the immersion technique. Okay, so what you do is if you want to learn, if you want to become fluent in English, you make sure that your whole world is in English. Okay, so you maybe form a group with your student, uh, with your buddies where you only talk to each other in English, in English, then you talk to your faculty members always in English. Then you, when you go home, you listen to BBC World or you listen to some, you listen to some of this Bloomberg News. Uh, yeah, I'll give you this link, I've given you some other links also. So you listen to English business news programs. We can see that we will give you the link later on or let it load. Okay. So the point is, uh, you listen to English business news programs that that serves a dual purpose. One is that your world is now in English because you're listening to somebody talking in English all the time. And second, you're also getting business news. Okay. You're also getting business news. You learn that which famous car company executive has just now been put in jail. You know, have you heard this? A fam famous uh, car company uh, CEO not plugged in. You guys are not plugged into the world of business at all. Okay. You heard of Renault Nissan. Yes. Renault Nissan, Mitsubishi Motors, there's a big joint venture. So the head of that, Carlos Ghosn, is a Brazilian, I think, but he has been the head of that company for a long time, very high profile auto industry executive. He's just he's now in a Japanese jail because he cheated on his income tax. So he understated about $100 million worth of income. So now he's in a Japanese jail. So all this stuff you get to hear if you're listening to business news continuously. So this is what I'm saying. The model for you guys is forget everything else. You are just in a cocoon, in a bubble in a bubble of business and that's all you should your brain should be bombarded with business news 24 7 okay so um, india a, a, a global everywhere okay it's a global world so you should your basic format is global and then you study india in depth because you're located here okay so this is not loading we'll show you the other link so the point is that if you're listening to english programs all the time okay you understand what is meant by immersion okay i'm not going to spend more time on it but make sure you fix this okay two years is enough time to fix it make sure you fix it okay i still see students coming and talking to faculty members in hindi because hindi is not the land nothing wrong with hindi i also studied hindi in school although it's not my mother tongue but uh, the point is hindi is not the language of global business you are business students okay so you have to be fluent in the language of global business which is english okay even the french are learning english now even the french italian everybody's learning english and there's no shame in that it's 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 a useful language in a way it's it's our it's actually if you see it's the only language in india that we can use everywhere i mean you can't go to madras and speak in hindi okay you have, but you can speak in english everywhere okay so this is now you will find this file you will find this file on in your folder okay i'm just going to open it again so as far as your now this is on the aspect of when i'm talking about you see here these four skills that i'm talking about now we are talking about domain knowledge okay so domain knowledge means a broad knowledge of business when you track business news what will happen is it will contribute to your strategic thinking as well and it will also contribute to your domain knowledge both and in a way if you're listening to english business programs it is also contributing to your communication skills okay so let's look at this okay so what you have to read is global business news i have to change this link okay what you have to do is i'm going to change this link to reuters okay 
I'm going to change this. Let's call it because Bloomberg. What has happened is Bloomberg is very good, but it's now gone behind a paywall. You know what a paywall is? Yes, sir. Paywall means it's an internet uh, news site, but you have to subscribe yeah. to get access. Okay. So this Global Business News. I'm going to change this link. First, I'm going to remove it. Do you know how to enter hyperlinks in Google Docs? Everyone knows. Highlight the text. Press Control K. First, copy the link then press this okay now it's got linked to reuters okay reuters is still free it's a major business site okay so this is the indian version of reuters you can read all the other versions lot of information and it's still largely free okay so you can see all this stuff make sure you read all this every day okay figure out what's going on in the world make sure you track all this every day there is another website here that i'm going to put uh, India okay on India news what happened people are uh, rustling are you getting bored okay so these are all things which you are not aware of right you need to do this stuff okay India news and you to see the left left hand side menu actually it's not coming up yeah okay so if you just press this uh, click this link this is the Google News link okay this file is in the, if you press this India news link okay if you click this link this will open up and here you can go and click on business okay so make sure at least the headlines you read every day and then certain stories you should read in detail okay India your India India market knowledge has to be also in depth you should have very good coverage of global business news and you should also have in depth coverage of India business news okay so all these stories it's a pretty long list of stories you can see this guys uh, if you had been reading this you would have known this this is the guy Carlos Ghosn. Okay, it's the pronunciation is it's called is it written as Goshen, but the pronunciation is Ghosn. Okay, so Carlos Ghosn, and uh, so this is the uh, so all this stuff you read. Okay, are you following what I, what I'm saying? Okay, so your first link is thing, and then for India Business News, I'm going to add one more, which is uh, this Bloomberg Quint. Okay, now what has happened is although Bloomberg has gone behind a paywall. Bloomberg has set up a media collaboration with this company called Quint in India. So this is not behind a paywall. Okay. So this is also something that you should read every day for your India news. Okay. Very good. They get pretty good analysis. Okay. Um, so now you can see this. This is MF says, what does MF stand for? Mutual funds. Okay. Good. So all this stuff you make sure you read every every day. Okay. And these guys also have business TV all these stories you can read to you can read all these stories okay you can re read all these stories now you'll see what is happening here why is that video not uh, tv should be coming yeah here is the bloomberg uh, live okay so this you can go either through youtube or you can go through this website so you'll see their live broadcast okay so this is the bloomberg tv india version okay now this will become bloomberg quint live so this you can get India Business News on this. You can also listen to CNBC TV 18. Okay. So every day what you should do is uh, for your India Business News, you should track what is happening on Bloomberg Quint, all the stories, the Google headlines for India Business News, and then also uh, track uh, CN at least listen one hour in the evening, at least listen to CNBC TV 18. They have good summary programs or you listen to Bloomberg Quint. Okay. One of the business programs, at least one hour every day. Okay. Make sure you're totally plugged in. If you do this every day, I told you about the bombardment theory your brain is continuously being bombarded okay eventually it will have a very good impact you know i mean down i mean after a period of time so read all this stuff then i'm going to put this also as a link so that yeah uh, yeah any business podcast please any business podcast um business podcast as such uh i, I haven't thought of any business card but i'll give you the bloomberg uh, i think what material that i've given you that is good enough okay if you follow that every day it's good enough then i'll give you some other other uh, specific uh, inputs if i if i need uh, if i think some specific links need to be followed i'll give you a uh, particular podcast okay so bloomberg quint link i've given you okay and uh, so this is for local news so local news now everybody has the formula okay google news then uh, bloomberg quint then reuters read the reuters also that's part, partly global partly india okay now close this all right now let's go here now this is for global news okay um 
I'm not going to go through Bloomberg. Better use the YouTube. Uh, YouTube. So uh, now I'm coming to global news. Okay. Now I'm coming to global news coverage. Very important. Okay. You have to be plugged into everything. There's a port strike in Brazil. You should know about it. Okay. Some of the students do it quite well. I remember Auntie Gazeva, a lot of the students like uh, the previous night there was a, a deal in the US to you know uh, solve the budget uh, problem that they were having and the next morning these guys were aware of it when I was checking in the class okay so you have to be that plugged in you have to be listening to this all the time that's why I said one hour in the evening at least uh, listening to uh, this uh, one hour in the evening listening to let's Bloomberg live what we are looking for is Bloomberg live okay because these guys haven't put uh, this is their home page yeah so when you check for Bloomberg live you get this let me put this link here put this here okay this is the main link that you should uh, okay that link are you following what I'm saying okay this is the best way you can go through the Bloomberg uh, home page also but it's a little harder to find if you search for Bloomberg live then look at that link you saw that live now yes. you saw that link okay so look, look at that and then click that and so here you will have um, So this will open i think a bandwidth is a little bit so this news now bloomberg 24 this this particular now this is global bloomberg okay not bloomberg quint is the india version of bloomberg and this is global bloomberg tv which is actually one of the best business channels that you can watch okay and it's available 24 7 although markets are open only from monday to friday on saturday sunday these guys have some replays they have some very interesting interviews with technology leaders you can get people from robotics in Silicon Valley. They will interview them. So all this thing, so all this stuff is learning for you guys. Everything is learning. Okay. So a lot of material on this website. I don't know why it's not loading, but where, when it does uh, load, you'll see this is what they're covering is they, they'll start from uh, Hong Kong, Tokyo. Then they'll cover, then they'll pass the uh, baton to London. Then from London, then it goes on to New York. So it's useful. You can listen to the New York time broadcast in the night. Okay. Or whenever it's convenient for you, but the New York time broadcast is better. So you can hear, you listen a lot. It's very focused on financial markets. Okay. But it's important for people to understand about financial, even if you're not planning to take finance. Okay. You need to understand financial markets. You need to have some kind of basic idea because financial markets are driving the global economy now. Okay. You'll have dramatic moves. Like, you know, the oil price has been cra crashing recently. Okay. Dramatic fall in the oil price. This has tremendous impact across the real economy. Okay. This will cause, this can cause bankruptcies in the case of oil co drilling companies who rely on a high oil price. Okay. This can cause projects to be canceled. Okay. So it has dramatic impacts and it all starts from financial markets. So it's very important to have an understanding of, I don't just uh, say, Oh my God, I don't understand this. I don't want to watch it. So don't have that attitude okay you just watch it every day on a regular basis whether you understand or not it doesn't matter is this clear yes. don't give up just because we are having a bandwidth problem here so okay so don't give up just because so this is your routine okay so india business news and if you watch bloomberg tv on a regular basis and plus if you from that reuters website okay and from the bloomberg quint you will get global business news uh, and if you watch bloomberg tv you will get global business news uh, you know a, a decent quality uh, input on global business news okay so that covers this part okay and then if you want to read more you can look at look at some of these other other uh, websites okay this is slightly more focused on financial markets if you guys some of you guys want to use charts and start following markets okay you can use some of these uh, uh, ch charting websites okay uh, this i've given you this link this is actually quite a useful link if you click this you will get um, this kind of a chart this is a useful ch uh, charting website because you can actually on this again this is kind of finance focus but as i said everybody needs to understand how to follow basic financial markets if you're working for a you know maybe you're working in the purchasing department of an electrical um, cabling company or something so you will be concerned with copper prices okay so you need to know how global pri I mean, copper prices are basically set globally okay we don't set the copper price in india as such so you need to know like you, this is a very useful you can set up a login for yourself so that you just need to go to this link and create your own login so if you want here you can just click here and look at copper prices okay if you have here you can just look at copper prices and so the point is that even people who are not interested in finance 
need to be uh, plugged into global financial markets because many important commodities like copper, crude oil, gold, the prices are all being set in global financial markets and they have massive repercussions in the real economy. Okay, if you're running an oil company or a, on a, or a, if you look at, if you want to look at how, many, how much copper prices have moved or how they have moved, you can, go and, uh, you can get a good idea about this. So this is how, let's say from this period, okay, from Jan June of 2012 to today, this is how they have been moving, okay. So you need to have an idea about all these things, even if you're not a finance student, okay. In purchasing departments in, in an electrical cabling company, copper prices are important. You need to know how they've been moving. So you need to be flu fluid, you need to be fluent in the way you move between all these different domains and the and the way you study financial markets because they're so important okay so don't have this thing that i'm not going to study finance so i'm not interested in this stuff okay that's not an option in today's world it's not an option okay so uh, <clears throat> these are some of the other things so you can explore these other charts okay i'm not going to go too much into the detail of the other charts right now okay but you can explore it on your own okay these are broad asset classes currencies uh, bond markets debt markets uh, equities and commodities okay you can read all this material you can follow this material on your own okay and now I'll just talk briefly about uh, your selection of finance okay some of you uh, I see your students seniors this is your general instructions file let's go back to where is the other this Okay, um, where is that other file that we were talking about? Unit zero. Okay, right. So, are you following what I mean? What I'm talking, I may be talking a little fast. I hope you're not finding me incoherent. You're following what I'm saying. You're getting the message. Okay. So, all this stuff, this the total bombardment that is going to happen on your brain, that will eventually lead to all kinds of development on do domain knowledge, strategic thinking, communication skills. Okay, these are all things that you have to do. Okay. So, really apply yourselves and uh, work on this okay so now uh, before this i just want to add one more thing here uh, business and let's say selection of uh, finance elective okay um, now this problem i'm just giving you a heads up because i'll be teaching you the finance electives mm -hmm. okay so what you do is i will just set up a if you just subscribe to this um, channel okay i'll give you some of the links okay okay what i will do is i will give you some of the links as far as uh, instead of wasting time on this now i'm going to give you so finance elective is um, watch sample classes okay because what is happening is like 58 students from your senior batch took finance but many of them are not interested in finance if you are not interested you don't need to know any maths okay beyond high school algebra you don't need anything beyond high school algebra maybe just a little bit of idea of calculus you don't really need to use calculus on a daily basis but the point is you don't need there's a perception that you need very high levels of math for finance which is a perception that is perpetuated by academics it's not correct okay in the real world of finance you don't need anything you should be comfortable with algebra you sh and you shouldn't have any fear of any kind of math but you really don't need that much math what you need is conceptual skills studying finance is very much like studying law it's very rigorous analytically rigorous you need to have con uh, you need to be able to understand concepts okay so uh, and you have to obviously be interested if you are not interested the point of giving you all this financial markets news and this that is you should be able to figure out is this something that fascinates you are you fascinated by financial markets how prices are moving okay what is happening to the oil price what happened to the Iran embargo and Trump suddenly gave concessions to India and a lot of other countries. Then the supply, uh, there was excess supply in the oil market, prices crashed. All this dynamic, is this something that fascinates you? If you're fast, if you're in, all you need to take up finance is, you should have the willingness to work hard and you should be fascinated by financial markets. Okay, the study of finance is totally focused on financial markets. So if you're not fascinated by financial markets, you don't have an interest then you will not like finance because it's very rigorous it's a very it's lot it requires a lot of work but if you like financial markets you will not find it uh, burdensome okay that's the important thing so what i'm going to do is i'm going to send you an email later on because of your senior batch i've recorded some of the videos of their classes so i'll send you some of those public videos you can listen to the examples you can watch the classes actually okay and then if you go through those classes this is for your selection of electives 
okay down the road so watch those classes see is there something that is there something that appeals to you okay if you don't find it appealing don't take finance okay because i really don't want to have students in the class who are not interested in finance it's very boring to teach people like that okay now quickly some uh, this class finishes at 11 right yes, okay quickly let's try and run through this unit 0 today itself okay very quickly i'll just run um, some macro guidelines okay these are all general principles okay individualism very important okay uh, not sufficiently emphasized in our society because we are kind of a more of a collectivist society we don't emphasize individualism but there's nothing wrong with individualism it is not antithetical to uh, it, individualism doesn't mean anti social behavior okay because we are social creatures by nature okay so even if i don't have if i even if i'm not bound by any social customs or social mores that doesn't mean that i'll stop you know having friends i'll stop seeing my uncles and aunts because it is our natural tendency as human beings even as an individual it is our natural tendency to uh, you know connect with society connect with other people okay but the point is that you are here basically uh, if you see you guys all know bruce lee Yes sir. Okay so Bruce Lee used to always say express yourself. He used to always say express yourself my friend. Okay. So um his his autobiography is called Artist of Life. Okay there's a book on uh, Bruce Lee called uh, not an autobiography a biography of uh, Bruce Lee it's called Artist of a very interesting guy because he used to write poetry he used to do a lot of calligraphy. So uh so Bruce Lee's advice also is express yourself. So what you need to understand is that your life is about an expression of yourself so you should also try to think about what am what am i actually what do i actually stand for and then the duty that the duty that you have okay there's this beautiful line by uh, this english poet called stephen spender okay who says that it's every man's duty to the universe to fulfill his potential okay so you should see that that is really the purpose of your life so everyone has a unique perspective unique set of skills and you should understand who you are what do you want okay and then you should try to uh, your life is about expressing yourself so that whenever you study okay all the material that you're studying even all this business news that you're absorbing everyone is going to have their own unique perspectives and how they integrate all that news into their own world view okay you understand what a world view is a world view is a way of looking at the world like socialism is a particular world view capitalism is a particular world view like here you know that uh, delhi cm like kejriwal has a socialistic world view okay he wants a government to do lots of thing that's one type of world view a capitalistic world view would be minimal government more emphasis on free markets so these are different ways of looking at the world so you will form your own views you don't have to agree with my view or somebody else's view you have to form your own view okay but you should be able to defend your view you should be you should be consistent you have to be consistent you can have any view but you have to be consistent you have to be able to defend your view okay so understand that life is all about expressing yourself okay so there are some interesting ways to give this message have you heard this song called my way okay you can listen to these songs i've given you the youtube links okay so my way is a very well known song it's a classic song by frank you heard of frank sinatra paul anka all these guys okay so anyway so slightly before your time but it's a very famous song point is this song was written for frank sinatra frank sinatra the famous uh, singer actor okay entertainer okay so uh, frank sinatra's life what the point of paul anka's song is that frank sinatra lived a very sort of uh, flashy and very sometimes you know breaking the law this that you know getting into fights and this that but the point is that frank sinatra did his thing he did things his own way the point is that it's you know i uh, i mean regrets or whatever so i mean the point is that it's i did it my way okay that's the end, that, that's the punch line that's the the chorus line in the song so the point is all of this is about that your life is about you expressing yourself okay so think about that and you know focus on that all the time so i've given you different ways to hammer home that message okay another thing is buckminster fuller he had a very uh, interesting image he is basically saying that buckminster fuller the famous inventor is like uh, elon musk from few generations ago couple of generations ago so uh, <clears throat> so he is saying that you are the captain of the ship of your destiny okay which is sailing on the ocean of life so you need to decide like so from time to time you should drop anchor and decide okay th am i going the right way am i going in the right direction okay this is very important introspection is also important from time to time you drop anchor and you look at what your where your ship has come from and where it's going and you should ask yourself okay is this where i want to go okay so these kinds of things are important okay because this is ultimately all this is happening within the larger scheme of your life you have to be aware of all that okay this is also important then in all this another thing i want to highlight briefly you'll notice that in every situation you have two identities okay you have an emotional identity 
and you have a rational identity okay so simple example if you take like if you are looking at a packet of sweets okay if you have a sweet tooth okay maybe you want to have the whole packet of sweets okay because you can't stop maybe if it's like son papri or something you can't stop okay so uh, then what you now your emotional side your emotional side wants to have like the whole packet okay or maybe it wants to have too much but your rational side should kick in saying that okay i have got a goal that you know i need to uh, come down to this much body fat percentage in 6 months maybe you set a goal for yourself okay if you set a goal for yourself and then if you say that okay if i eat if i like eat the whole packet then i will violate that goal okay so you have to understand that everywhere in your life you are facing these kind of situations okay when you have work to do maybe you don't want to do that work you want to go for a movie or something these are all decisions that you are taking okay so it's a battle between your emotional self and your rational self are you getting the message okay so you have to understand in the larger context of what we discussed here okay is every man's duty remember your duty is to fulfill your potential okay you have to express yourself you have of course you have to have fun along the way as well but you need to keep sight of uh, you know uh, keep track of the longer term vision okay and you have to understand you have to so so what is happening is that the rational part you understand what a trustee is this is actually a legal term a trustee means suppose my friend has a young uh, very tiny daughter and he 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 maybe not he has some other problems or whatever so he wants to appoint me as a trustee he, he creates a trust for his daughter and he appoints me as a trustee okay so that means a trust has a certain pool of money so now i have to manage the money i am the trustee and the beneficiary of the trust is his daughter so i have to manage the trust for the daughter's benefit not for my benefit <laughs> okay i don't know what happened here but the point is that as a trustee i have to manage the trust for the benefit of the beneficiary for the welfare of the beneficiary so you can think of a trust as a situation where your talent okay what are you going to express in your life you're going to express your talent everybody has a talent okay so it's like you understand what i'm trying to say here that the rational part of you okay is like a trustee for your talent you have a certain talent you have to express you have to exploit that talent okay and achieve a certain things okay and the rational part of you is acting as a trustee for that talent that means the rational part of you is managing that talent okay and managing your your energy and your time in a way that the talent can be maximized that the talent is actually expressed fully okay and uh, your potential is maximized are you following what i'm saying okay so this is just a ter term from the law okay to finish uh, this point okay so uh, so far you are following the train of thought is it logical okay now another thing that i said was individuals now don't talk don't talk, then this kind of conduct will lose you marks in the class okay in the future when we start tracking cp points okay all right guys focus let's try and finish this chapter okay quickly now another thing that i said independent okay if you are expressing yourself obviously you have to understand first you have to know who you are If you don't know who you are, what are you going to express? Otherwise, you're just randomly doing whatever comes in your head, right? You have to have a good sense of who you are, okay, before you express yourself, okay. So that's why you have to understand the the other important part from which follows from individualism is that the power of independent thought. This is I can't emphasize this enough. This is the most important thing in the world. There are people with double PhDs who can't think for themselves. This is so rare. You won't be. Uh, it's amazing, okay. uh there are so many people out in the world most people can't think for themselves they get easily brainwashed okay they get easily brainwashed by the media this that you must develop this is more important than any degree that you get the ability to think for yourself if somebody comes and tries to give you some kind of uh, you know uh, spiel you should be able to analyze what he's saying and say that okay no this guy is trying to brainwash me this is not correct you should have that power of independent thought okay and that as you can see is connected to individualism can you see that if you are thinking about yourself all the time if you are thinking about who you are what you believe in okay that leads to independent thought okay this is very important uh, uh, and this is also connected to critical thinking as well okay so all right now another thing that i have talked uh, that i want to just discuss briefly is these are all techniques from psychology that you should be aware of you can try and uh, and then you can try and impl implement it in your own life there is something called an observing ego we it's a term used in psychology which is essentially what you're doing is if you're doing certain things okay as you as you go through your life and you do certain things 
you try to develop a part of yourself which kind of sits outside your outside of yourself and it's observing what you're doing and it's especially it's observing your thoughts okay maybe whatever decision you take every decision that we take mostly is, is there's some kind of logic behind it maybe good logic bad logic but there's some kind of thinking behind it so you're actually the observing ego is sitting outside of yourself and observing your own thoughts and your actions okay and through that you have to try and figure out i mean you have to figure out the dysfunctional uh, thinking patterns okay in the sense that like maybe what what happens i mean it's not a good example but maybe if you try out for the football team let's say you try out for the football team and you don't get selected okay and then what you tell yourself is that okay i'm no good i'm no good as an athlete okay this is the kind of uh, this is the kind of self talk that you engage in okay when you don't make the football team you say that i'm not a good athlete okay now that's one way of talking to yourself but you could have also said that at this point of time i wasn't in sufficient uh, shape to be able to make it to the football team now if you talk in the second way that means you're not saying you're not making global statements like i'm not a good athlete you're just saying that at this point of time i was not well prepared which means after 6 months you can try out again if you're better prepared okay that's a more positive way to talk to yourself okay so we are always talking to ourselves about the things that happen in our lives okay so the observing ego tries to uh you know sit outside of yourself and observe the way you're talking to yourself the way you're reacting to situations okay so your thinking process so therefore you critically analyze your thinking process so that you can improve your thinking because if you think in a positive way you will have positive you will end up with positive outcomes okay now we say this facetiously but this is actually quite serious if you think about it most of the outcomes that happen to you in your life actually reflect your own mindset they are not like anybody's fault or okay there is some bad luck good luck business that's going on but by and large whatever happens to you okay there is a saying actually that whatever happens to you reflects your mindset that the outcomes that you have experienced actually reflect your mindset the way you took decisions the way you made made decision choices in the past that has led to these outcomes okay so this once you think about it it's quite powerful that means that by changing your thinking you can change your outcomes okay so you have to think about all these things you have to re- do more research on these ideas and be conscious of all these things don't like just go through your life like a zombie you know just going through and just going through the motions analyze what you're doing so introspect from time to time what have i been doing is this the right way to do it so because i want to spend i want to finish this in this class so i don't want to spend too much time read these two books if you can okay this is a free book that is available and this is also a very interesting book i don't know how much this costs and anthony robbins is because this is like the old this is like written by a greek greek philosopher epictetus it's an old book and is written in an old style okay but uh, it's available for free you can read it it's very good basically what it tells you to do is it tells you to focus on the things that it focus on your main task in life focus on the things that you can control okay it's a very important work of stoic philosophy which is i think everyone should read okay but this is a more accessible edition anthony robbins unlimited power you can read this book but it will cost you something you can check what it is okay but i think it's worth it it's a good book okay and if you want you can read uh, this book also meditations of marcus aurelius marcus aurelius have you seen gladiator have you seen that russell crow movie what is that movie gladiator there's a movie where uh, anyway so marcus aurelius is a famous roman emperor okay he's very famous roman emperor very big uh, great conqueror but he also tried to apply philosophy in his daily life as an emperor Okay, so that's why the meditations is an important uh, piece of work. Okay, and this guy is actually the coach. He's actually the teacher of Marcus Aurelius. Okay, Mark Antonius means Marcus Aurelius Antonius. This is the full name of the emperor. And Epictetus is actually a Greek philosopher. Uh, he was a slave, and then he was released, and he taught this Roman emperor. Epictetus is the philosopher that he taught the Roman emperor. Okay, so uh, what I would do is, yeah, I'm just I'm, I'm trying to wrap it up. I don't want to do it and I don't like to do things in a hurried way but uh, are you guys getting a f- sense of what I'm saying here okay so you do some research on this on your own okay another thing yeah so this fe- the cognitive psychology um the uh, observing ego this is very prominent in sport psychology a lot of these uh, sport like this michael schumacher and all these kind of drivers they are not just about the physical skills physically you look at him i've actually uh, seen him is even shorter than i am not a very impressive figure but obviously is drive will drive it's all mind okay it's completely mind and the way you talk to yourself in your mind okay these things are very important and uh, the other thing i want to leave you with is kaizen 
okay i think i'll have to spend some time on it in the next class also um, <clears throat> we have a couple of minutes okay have you guys heard of this expression guys and we'll continue i don't like to rush it so i will uh, continue in the next class also what is have you heard of kaizen yes sir. okay what is kaizen continuous improvements okay small and continuous improvements very good at least you heard of this so this is also the way you can apply kaizen to your daily life okay if you are achieving if you are trying to go to a certain place you're trying to achieve a goal don't get frustrated if you're not able to do it on the first day first day second day first week second week third week it's not working it doesn't matter keep trying eventually it will work okay so that's uh, that's another idea that you can apply in your in your own uh, uh, you know in your own life okay this file is in your folder okay i will just talk about this briefly this file is in your folder you can open this file i've given you this uh, these online course portals now i don't want to overload overload you guys because you also have coursework to do but if you have time if you can manage time at least fiddle around you know get a feel of these things okay these uh, the blue ones are the important ones okay where you can actually go look at all these course portals and try to do some of the courses on these uh, see, I'll, I'll discuss this briefly on the in the next class uh, i'll continue with this i'll just cl close up on this uh, topic in the next class but try and uh, come try and start and finish that reading on by glanville williams so this is okay i think i'll give you um, okay kind your time is up okay so we can stop here now and please make sure you do